लीला एंड ही जज पार्वती आल्सो नोज दैट अष्टकाली लीला यू नो अष्टकाली लीला ऑफ कृष्ण वेरी सीक्रेट बट ये सो दो ही इज सो मच सुपीरियर वर्षिपेबल ऑफ प्रला बट Here, Krishna is telling his devotees. Devotee means affluent. So, Arjun is affluent. Shankar is people tree is affluent. Gavis, cows are affluent. But all they are not Krishna. For English way, affluent. Very near and near. Kirtan. Can you do? Why not? Can you do? Why not?
Today I will have to go to take rest. I only came here to meet the all devotees. And if you have any question, you can go to this. Tomorrow there is a very sacred day. The disappearance day of Sri Bhakti Vinod Thakur and also of Gadadha Pandit. Hmm? So, the devotees should be ready for. I can tell anyone to speak about both of them. And after that, Day after tomorrow, there is a day of Jagannath Dev, Gundita Mandir Mahajimane, yes. the clearance of the temple of Gundisha, where Krishna will go with Subhadra and Bhagavad in chariot. And after that day, chariot festival in Puri and everywhere. So, very separate days are coming. I wanted to be at that time in India, but I am here. I wanted to at that time in Jagannath Puri, where all the bodies will be there. So, quickly you see. Shivadev has requested me to explain something about why, um, first of all, is Prahlad superior than Shiva. According to Shiva's own statement, he is saying that Prahlad is superior. So, is he actually superior? Or does Shiva have some hidden motive in presenting it in this way? So, before attempting to say anything, I just want to say that actually, uh, I'm not fit to try to explain this. I cannot answer this question. Uh, so, this is just a trick of Srila Gurudev to make me come up here and 
expose that I'm a fool before everyone. And in this way he can correct me and give the proper siddhanta. So in order to uh, be an instrument in carrying out this leela, I will uh, show myself to be a fool. So, <clears throat> uh, in our class before Srila Gurudev arrived, we were discussing some of the significance of even each and every word of Sanatana Goswami's book, even the names of the chapters have great significance. First chapter, Bhoma. What is the conception of devotion or what is the conception of one who has the Lord's mercy in the earthly realm? Then Divya. What is the conception of those who have the mercy in the celestial realm of the heavenly planets? And then the next, Prabhanchatit. So Prabhanchatit means beyond the covering of the universe. And this is this discussion between Lord Shiva and uh, Narada Muni comprises the entire chapter, Prabhanchatit. So we are discussing that, first of all, Bhom refers to the conception of having the Lord's mercy on this realm. Mostly they are desiring material enjoyments and they are desiring superior material enjoyment. They want to have the position of the devatas. They want to have a lifespan like them. They want to have power like them and so on and so forth. Material opulence like them. If they could have that, they would think that they have the Lord's mercy. This is the conception of bhakti within the earthly realm. And Divya, within the celestial realm, they have so many powers, but still they're desiring more. In the case of Indra, he was desiring to have more powers. So up to, just up to the position of Brahma, this is the covering of Gya, of karma. That we have to understand all of these distinctions in terms of Anyabhilashita Shunyam Gya Karma Dhyanabritam Anupulina Krishna Nushilam Bhakti Rutama. So what Sanatana Goswami is explaining in the first two chapters are what is the covering of karma. And that covering of karma is the desire for mukti, the desire for material enjoyment, to have greater opulence, and also one will do some service for the Lord, but service to enjoy that opulence. And then we were just reading how Lord Brahma, he says that... What, that is, again, clear, what is the covering of karma to mukti? In the verse which we were discussing the other night, Rupa Swami's verse, there, Rupa Goswami specifically analyzes what is the covering of karma. And he says that to perform like duties in Varnashram, which are also related to Krishna, they're performed or offered to Krishna, like for example the Shraddha ceremony, that after the uh, father or parents are passed away, one performs some ceremony for the uh, benefit of the deceased relatives. So there are many types of duties like this in Karmakanda. So if one performs those ceremonies thinking that if I don't do this, it will be very detrimental for me, it will be detrimental for my bhakti. And conversely, if I do this, it will be very beneficial for my bhakti. <coughs> so one who has this type of mentality, this is the covering of karma and bhakti. And one is desiring, one is not worshipping the Lord for the Lord's pleasure. One is, desire, one is worshipping the Lord so that I may be pleased and so that I may enjoy material opulence. So this covering is there within this earthly plane and extending up to the celestial planets, the heavenly planets, and right up to the position of Lord Brahma. That is, you can't get a position of greater opulence or power in the material universe beyond that. He has the longest lifespan, he has the greatest opulence. So he has nothing more to aspire for within the material world. And he's not worshipping the Lord like Indra or those below him in order to get bhukti. <coughs> but he's saying that I am so disturbed by the uh, all the heavy responsibilities of administrating the universe and, and also by the fear of Mahakal, that actually I'm simply desiring Mukti. 
and I'm worshipping the Lord for this purpose. So here comes the covering of Gyan, that one is desiring liberation or freedom from the miseries of material existence. <coughs> and when we come to the position of Prabhanshatit, the first position beyond the covering of the universe is this Mukti Dham. And the upper side of that is Shivalok. So in Mukti Dham there is one attains impersonal liberation merging into the Lord's effulgence, or merging into the uh, bodily rays of the Lord. And the upper side of that is Shivalok, where the Mukta Purushas reside, liberated souls reside. So although they are liberated souls, they are beyond the covering of the universe, but they don't have any developed sense of service to the Lord. So although Shiv himself is a great devotee of the Lord, but those who are residing in his, in his realm, the liberated souls, they have taken shelter of him because, as, as was said by Narada and also by Brahma, that he can award mukti, he can award liberation. So he can give them residence on his abode, but they don't really have a very developed sense of uh, service to the Lord there. <coughs> so, Lord Shiva, he wants to, before he pointed out Prahlad, he said that if you really want to know those who have the Lord's mercy, it is the devotees in Vaikuntha. Why? Because they are doing so much service for the Lord, and they don't desire anything. They don't desire any of the pleasures of this world. So he went on glorifying the residents of Vaikuntha for quite some length, and then Parvati cut in at a certain point and said, well, what about Lakshmi? You know, you're glorifying so much the residents of Vaikuntha, but you haven't said anything about Lakshmi, and she is the most dear to the Lord. She went on glorifying Lakshmi because she is her Saki, she is her intimate friend. So, <clears throat> Lord, after hearing all this, Narada was ready. He was just ready. He was so excited. He was just ready to take off and go to Vaikuntha. And at that point, Narada, he actually physically grabbed him. He said, wait, don't go yet. He said, I have a secret to tell you. And then he whispered in the ears of Narada and began to glorify Prahlad. And the reason why he was glorifying Prahlad was because if he openly said in front of Parvati that Prahlad was greater than Lakshmi, then Parvati, she wouldn't have been able to tolerate this because Lakshmi was her Saki, she was her friend. And <clears throat> so he was speaking this in private and he went on glorifying Prahlad, how he is such a great devotee, how even at the time of Narasimha's appearance, um, even Lakshmi herself, she was afraid to go before Narasimha. All the devatas, they were all afraid. No one could pacify Narasimha, but Prahlad was able to. So he was saying that it was, everyone saw at that time that Prahlad, although he was a, they call him a, like a Nava Bhakta. Oh, he was just a new Bhakta. Who's this new Bhakta? Uh, but he was able to go and pacify the Lord. So it seems that he, his position was superior. But how can Prahlad be superior to Lakshmi, who is the eternal consort of the Lord? And the question is coming now, how can Prahlad be superior to Shiva? And why did Narada send Prahlad to, uh, why did he send Narad to Prahlad rather than to Vaikuntha? So, as far as I understand, that his whole point in developing all this siddhanta is to teach us what is the ultimate sadhya, what is the ultimate object of attainment. And that is to be something which is to be followed in this world. We have to follow the example of the devotees in this world. So we see that after Palad, there was Hanuman. And after Hanuman, the uh, Pandavas 
and after the Pandavas, the Yadus, and uh, especially Uddhav, and after that, the residents of Braj, and especially the Gopis. So all the devotees he's pointing out, although they are liberated souls and they have their place in the eternal abode of the Lord, yet at that time the Lord's pastimes were manifested in this world. So as Narada Muni was going first to Prahlad in Sutala, and then to the other devotees, they were within this universe. In order to show us the necessity of, uh, or how to practice devotion within this world. Because if he goes directly to Vaikuntha, which is already within the spiritual world, then how will, we, how will we be able to follow the example of those devotees who are already nitisid and situated in that position? So by pointing out Prahlad who is within this world, and by this, um, by this particular pastime, where he was showing Prahlad's greatness in relationship even to Lakshmi and Garud and other intimate associates of the Lord, he was showing the importance of bhakti. That by bhakti, even the Lord can be subjugated. And so therefore, uh, because of Prahlad's bhakti, uh, the Lord was pacified only by him, and it seemed that his position was greater than that of Lakshmi and so many others. So in the case of Shiv, who is, uh, we see in that in his abode, the Mukta Purushas are there, and he's representing these Mukta Purushas. So although they are liberated personalities, yet they are, they are not doing any service for the Lord. And so he wants to uh, show that Prahlad is actually greater than this. His position is greater than that. And he, as the representative of these Mukta Purushas, is pointing out Prahlad as superior. So that is as far as I can say. And now Dev can correct me and give the proper siddhanta. <coughs> Here, Shankar is telling him something that Prahlad is Purja family because he is most dear servant to Krishna than me. Here, actually, I think Prahlad Maharaj is not superior than Shankar himself. But he should be considered to there are two Shankar. One on the post of Shankar and one same Shankar when free from this and he becomes Gopishwar or Hanuman or anything else. <coughs> Here in Divya and Prapanchati. Brahma is a post. So, in post, Shankar is superior than Brahma post. Understand? What is the function of Brahma, that post? Brahma is not a man, but this post is like President of America, President of or Prime Minister of Holland. A man represents for that. When he is on this post, he will have to do his job. So Brahma is a post, Sang Shiv is also a post. No. So, regarding post, Shankar post is more superior than Brahma. No. Why? 
He is like Vishnu, Shankar. And he is like sometimes the very real Vishnu. He is also more powerful than Brahma. Because if a man observing hundred births very regularly and in pure way he will observe the life of Varnashamdha actually, then he may be Brahma. And when Brahma will do his function more expertly and very true in sense, then after hundred births, Brahma becomes like she. Then he can do the function of Sankar. Otherwise he cannot do. So she post is more superior than Brahma. Being on the post of that post of Sankar, what the function is there? As Pralaya, Sankar is Pralaya. Brahma cannot do Pralaya. Very dangerous thing. What is that problem? Nothing to fear. Like a cultivator cultivates a very big form and wheat full of heat that form is. He gives seeds of wheat very carefully, now he says, gives water at time. And after five months, six months, when wheat is ripe and matured, then what he does? He cuts all the creepers of which he planted and he was so much always giving God and doing everything. But now with his own hands are machine. He cut all the plants of wheat and then takes the seed and that seed is kept and all the fuels are burnt. 